Hello, my name is Cheryl Wilson, and thank you for joining me on my channel. To those that have come back, I really appreciate you continuing to support me. Those that are new to my channel, I do abstract art, I talk about my process, I do full paintings, and then I talk about several things um, like uh, concepts, why I paint what I paint, and um, just all things abstract art. This painting is another one in the series of what would I change in the painting? And this was done in 2020, and I've had it on my personal gallery wall. And I, I loved it when I finished it. And, but there was something about it that kept me from putting it out there into my online galleries, uh, where I sell my art in on my online store. And um, I know now what I would do differently. So if you watched my past video where I went through two paintings, what makes a painting, in my opinion, um, finished and done and things to look at, um, watch that first if, if, um, if you want. But this painting, I'm going to go through and tell you what I would do differently to bring this, again, to me, another layer up so it is ready to actually put in my gallery and sell. So without further ado, let's go on to the video. And again, thank you for joining me. And I appreciate um, those that leave comments for me, encouragement. And um, I just appreciate from the bottom of my heart you being here with me. said I believe this is a 20 by 20 canvas and I I like the painting but there's some things about it that I have found through looking at it for two years on my wall that I would change and um, as I discussed in one of my previous videos there's a list that you can go through that really helps you when you are working on a painting to help identify the things in your art that you might change. Um, I have a list and I have down in the description box where you can you can find this but I feel this out and I look at this and it helps guide me and I only charge two dollars for it on my PayHip account. Um, it just helps me as an artist um, you know, get the supplies to, to put my videos out. But when I look at this list, I it helps trigger and identify things that I might change. One of the other things I use is I, I have several color wheels. And this is very much um, on this side of the spectrum. The very warm colors. And then I've added in some purple and it kind of gives it a pop because I was going through probably a purple stage and then um, of course I added in some mixed media. So the color wheel is also a good tool. But for this particular painting, let's just start by looking at it and what I find works. What I find works is, is all this in the background is the underpainting. And it's, it's a loud or very busy underpainting, which is fine. If you have marks on the top, like these marks, the Scraffito, and some of the other marks that are more dynamic. So it, it's not all one, um, one thought throughout the painting. So is the painting interesting? Yes, I find it interesting. And the reason why is because I have um, different markings. I have big splashes. Even in the underpainting, I have marks. This is a piece of paper I added. I have some uh, like scraffito that adds a different dimension than the underpainting. There's probably like five or six layers on the underpainting where I've just added color muted it in 
and then added more color and then added more uh, added some tissue paper or handmade papers. Um, is there enough of a difference that keep you interested? Yes, I find that there is. I find that, um, again, there's a nice muted underpainting and then the differences is I added some dots in here on some papers and tissues and then I added some scraffito and some larger marks. Is there a connection or are the styles fighting each other? I don't think the styles are really fighting each other. I've even added in some gold, which was kind of a bold mark, but it kind of helps go with the, the um, yellows that I added in here. So I don't feel they're fighting each other. Are there things that allow your eye to, to go through the canvas? Yes, I think you can. I automatically start here. And then I just look through here and I have enough marks that ha allow your eye to go through the canvas. Um, if this had been a single mark, say I didn't have that, I would say it wouldn't be as interesting to me because this mark is about the same size as this, about the same size as this area. I think I needed a bigger slash of solid color here to make it a little bit different than some of the other marks. I think these three little marks down here help draw the eye down. So I have the dots in different places. Are there enough opposites to make a difference? Yes, I think I have a lot of opposites in here. Um, even down to the added piece of heavy paper here where I have some marks. Value. Here's where I think if I were to do anything to this painting, uh, that is one of the big things. For instance, I took some different colors, the oranges, and then I added some pink to it. I added some white to it. So I could add some different values in here to give it a difference. Where would I add it? I'm going to talk about that in a second. This is the, the straight pink with a little bit of white, a little bit lighter than that. And then this is white, which I've added over here. Um, let's see. Is my eye drawn to shapes where light versus dark and dark versus light? For instance, I have a very dark, the darkest value in here is the purple. And here's a spot where I've added white. Here's a really good example where I've added the purple and then I've added a yellow uh, spot on the top. That is the complete contrast. Um, then I've had, I have some white spots in here where there's like some purple next to it. Could I add a, could this be a little darker? Could be. That would be a nice contrast. So lights and darks, I've, I've hit on that in, in this painting. Not a lot, but I've hit on that. Do I have quiet areas? Yes. This whole area is what I call the quiet. It's the underpainting. It's a loud underpainting, but it is, it's all very muted. Color. Color is one of the tools, as we said before. I think value is more important, but color is, to me, very important for me as an abstract artist to have different colors. And as I said, I have a lot of warm colors in here, and then I've added some pops of more of the, the um, cooler colors. Is there light and dark throughout the painting? That's when I added these marks here and some of the white and even the lighter pink. When it was all the one color, it was fun, it was beautiful, but it needed lighter colors to help bring the painting um, to more of an interest. Um, line. Are there enough contrasting lines? Um, adding the scraffito for me made a difference. Adding the dripser and the underpainting made a difference. Adding these in a more linear type of a uh, marking um, made a difference, in my opinion, for this particular painting. Straight versus curved. Um, yes, there's a lot of curvilinear marks in the underpainting. I don't do a lot of straight lines but as these here could be considered straight, they are hard edges, some soft edges in here, hard edges, more soft edges. 
So there's a difference between the line and the hard and soft type edges. Texture, a lot of texture in here. What I would change in this painting is two things. Bring in some more lighter colors. And the reason why I say that is because when I look in the painting, one, I need to add more of my personal marks. I, in the two years since I first painted this, I've learned that I like a lot of the markings with um, my uh, utensils. So yes, I need to add more markings. I can work off of the markings here that are already in the painting and just enhance that. Not a lot, but um, adding more of my particular uh, loved markings. And two, these just look like they were added on top as they were. What I need to do is when I bring in my additional color is to add them on top to blend these in more. So they're not just sitting on top. So I can do that in a couple different ways. For instance, this added piece of paper here, which is orange with some marks, has a line in it. I can just continue that line through the painting. Here's another line down here. I can just keep playing with the particular shape of that. So I've added some more of my marks. Here's some more here. I could just build off of that. It's almost like the marks um, are curvilinear, and then I could just go off on my own and do what I want to do with my marks. Some I want to obliterate, some I want to add in. So I didn't want to add a lot of marks, but I wanted to add enough to give it more of some of the signature marks that I like. Then my paint is still a little bit wet over here. Again, I want to blend some of this in. So let's take some of this paint. We need to make some more. And I have the Lucas. I have the Lucas. And what I don't like is just to take the orange paint and add it to the canvas. I like to blend them. So I'm going to squirt some out over here. Blend them together so there's some um, blending going on and it really adds, in my opinion, to the beauty of the canvas. I'm going to take some of the pink, more of that orange, and maybe just you know, orange that up a little bit more. What really lo works better is if I use my fingers. So again, I'm just, I'm not doing a lot of changes here, but I'm blending in these um, marks here, these papers here, so you can't really tell what's been added. I think what I'm going to do is get some of the purple. I have a Lucas purple. What was initially down here was more than likely a golden high flow. So I'm going to squirt some of that out and use it. I'm not going to use it straight, but maybe roll some of that on. Remember what I said about having the, like a light here? Let's add a little purple right next to it. Let's find another light area and add some of that purple. Kind of to draw the eye down. I might need to add some of the purple down here. So the eye comes down here. I like that. So let's see. Maybe just 
here, so that in. So I'm bringing the painting together. I'm making the cohesiveness of what was there and marking marks on top. And it doesn't, doesn't matter if you paint over it and then you have to re-add. That's perfectly fine. I find I'm adding some more. I'm actually what I'm seem to be doing is finding that I want the purples to be more dynamic, so there's more of a contrast. And then I need to take a look at the contrast that I've added and work on maybe adding some of the light. By the way, this is a Woody, and I love this. It's by Stabilo. But one time I was just busy, and I took my paintbrushes, and I put them in my water, and I grabbed this and put this in the water, and the next day, this was completely hollow. So this is water-soluble which means it will melt, <laughs> I said, but it did melt. So there wasn't a lot of change in this painting. Do you like it better? You might not. Do I like it better? It has more of my marks in it that I like, um, you know, and I could still work. I will put uh, spray paint in my paintings, like a, a number or something. I like that. I don't think I'm going to do that with this one. But did it change the painting? In my opinion, it changed it um, just slightly. And I may work on this a little bit more, but the point is, Take a look at what your take a look at your paintings. Decide if there um, there's some things using a sheet that you can either get mine or you can certainly make your own. In fact, I encourage you to make your own. Go through it. See if you have opposites. See if you have interesting marks. See if you have um, big marks, different marks, um, very flowing marks, very solid marks. Um, a soft contrast, hard lines, texture, especially your personal marks in here. I'm going to work on this area a little bit more um, myself. Um, you know, so it's not all done, but I'm, I'm like, in fact, even that right there, I liked a little bit more. Um, bring them back the dots, and I can certainly add dots on my own. I mean, it doesn't mean... Um, that just because the dots were on that paper, I can't add them, you know, a little bit. So I just used a brush and I brought in some purple dots next to the, the black and white ones. So I hope you understand the concept of what I'm saying. And it's just my opinion. But go ahead and try it with your paintings. See what you come up with to take your paintings to the finish line. So this is an example of my painting when I have finished adding some additional uh, marks and uh, contrast and marking over the papers uh, so they didn't look like they were just added. So just using my sheet of, of um, guidance that um, you know I developed and made some of my personal marks on here. So this is what the painting's looking like. Um, finished and I'm pretty sure it's done I like it better it's a personal preference your abstract arts pieces are yours and um, you know out of the ten people who may say they really like my abstract art there's probably ten out there that are gonna say they're too chaotic or 
They may say it's too orange. It doesn't matter. It's it's what I think of the painting. And um, if I'm happy and I feel satisfied as an artist, and I hope that's the technique and the philosophy you have. And just don't get discouraged. Just keep going on your art. Just plugging through, finding tools and things that help you. But again, I appreciate you um, being on this journey with me as an artist. I'm still learning. I'm still growing myself. But I like to share with you some of the things, the knowledge I know. And if you have any questions, please let me know. If you have any suggestions of any other ideas of paintings or ideas you want me to share with you, let me know. I'll do my very best. But again, thank you. And I hope you give me a thumbs up on this. Uh, to keep the um, YouTube algorithm happy and um, so that I can grow my channel myself. It encourages me. So uh, if you want to post any uh, paintings and ideas and things you've learned in the, U the Facebook group, I'll have that below. But again, thank you and uh, just enjoy your artist journey.